All right, what's going on, guys? This is the Boxing Genius here, and today we'll have some quick post-fight thoughts on uh, Charlo versus Castaño. Now, I'm not gonna show any footage no more because Showtime is pretty strict with their copyright claims and copyright strikes as well. So I got striked once before. I don't want that to happen no more. All right. So today's video is going to be an immediate post-fight analysis on the fight between Charlo versus Castaño. I'm going to make it really simple for you guys and um, hopefully you can pick it up. Now in my prediction video, you can clearly see how I established that the hybrid stance is very vulnerable to lead right hands, to counter right hands over the top. And that's what we've seen in the first couple of rounds uh, with Charlo. Okay. Now, Derek James and Derek James has, has one game plan for almost all of his fighters. It is to establish the jab early on, okay? But the problem was that when Charlo tried to establish that, he was constantly getting countered with the right hand. And being that he has the hybrid stance, his face is getting much closer to the right hand of his opponent and it doesn't really go off to the side. He doesn't really take it off of the firing range, off of the firing line, off of the center line, whatever you want to call it. And he wasn't able to counter or he wasn't able to throw his jab without getting countered back with the right hand okay so that first game plan that in, that initial game plan of trying to establish a jab did not work so what did they do next what they did next was that they tried to counter castaño with the left hook with the check hook so castaño will throw the or Cas charlo will throw the jab first baiting castaño to throw the right hand the lead right hand the right hand over the top and then he would take a step back try to throw the check hook which he landed i think i don't know what round it was maybe it was the second or third he landed a clean left hook and then that's when everyone said oh castaño already tasted the power of charlo he's gonna be cautious now but no he, he did not become cautious and in fact he became more aggressive and in the later rounds it he kept up the pressure he increased the pressure he kept on going forward and then Charlo just got overwhelmed, man. Like, there's something about Spence and Charlo and all of these fighters that is being trained by Derek James that whenever they fight someone who's willing to trade back and who throws a lot of punches, they get overwhelmed. A lot of y'all think I was bullshitting when I said that, you know, Spence gets overwhelmed easily because he doesn't know how to fight on the back foot, but he tries to, to stay there. That's the same thing with Charlo. We've seen that over there. A lot of y'all were getting mad at me when I said that Pacquiao was going to overwhelm Spence with his punches because Spence has the... Spence uses the hybrid stance, but he doesn't know how to fight and counter off the back foot. That's the same thing we've seen with Charlo. He doesn't really know how to counter on the back foot with the exception of the check hook. He was able to land some check hooks at times, but he, he didn't follow it up, okay? And that was the problem. He was landing those check hooks on Castaño, but he didn't follow it up. And Castaño, after getting caught with the left hook, he just kept coming forward, kept coming forward. He kept on backing up Charlo to the ropes, Jermel Charlo to the ropes. He kept on pushing him. He kept on using his upper body strength. He kept on using his height to his advantage because the, because the shorter you are, the more leverage you can apply on your opponent. So he used that, you know? And then if you also look at that prediction video, I talked about the vulnerabilities of the high guard of Castaño, where he's very vulnerable to the shots that are coming down the center. And it also happened. Uh, Charlo, I think it was round eight. I have to look at my notebook once again. But in the late rounds, he, he got caught with a left uppercut and then he got caught with straight right hands on the center as well. And that's really what I what I wanted Charlo to do early on, to catch Castaño on the center. Not to try and catch him with hooks because the hooks just kept on getting, or Castaño just keep, kept on blocking those hooks. Castaño just kept blocking those body shots. So what I really wanted him to do was to uh, try to throw the straight right hand and then try to follow it up with the left uppercut because Castaño is really good at protecting shots on the side and that's what he did but he did it a little bit too late um at some points he was he was kind of close to knocking him out but i guess he was too afraid to overcommit and um, he didn't really go all out on his shots he didn't like follow it up as much and after he hurt Castaño for a little while he let Castaño move around a little bit and then he froze once again that's a problem with him he constantly freezes he constantly freezes when he it's the right time to attack already. He constantly stands still when it's time to attack already. Harrison was showboating before. Harrison was dancing in the middle of the ring with his hands down. And he still froze. He didn't attack him. And this is constantly the problem with Jermel. I'm not sure about Jermel, but Jermel definitely has this problem where he just freezes up. He just waits for too long. And I think the hybrid stance has a lot to do with that, you know. 
the constant transition between the back foot and the front foot kind of affects how he loads up on his power shots it affects how he sets up his offense and so that was it uh, on the late rounds he caught castagna on the center he was catching him with the uppercut it was and then he was backing him up um he was setting him up first with the shots on the center and then he would finish off with a hook to the head or a hook to the body and then he was catching castagna but again it was a little bit too late castagna was too calm castagna knew how to move around and I think if if Charlo really went for the kill, if Charlo tried to, uh, if tried Charlo tried to follow up those shots, those power shots that he had, he could have had a chance to like overwhelm Castaño. But I think it was a little bit too late, and he was tired as well. I'm not gonna blame him. I mean, after getting caught with that many punches from Castaño, I'd be fucking tired too, you know. So in the late rounds, it was just a little bit too late, and uh, I already knew that. If Charlo doesn't knock out Castan, if Charlo doesn't KO Castano, it's over. He's gonna win. But the thing is, it ended up as a split decision draw. I I had it eight to four, eight rounds for Charlo, and then four rounds for Castano, or eight rounds for Castano, four rounds for Charlo. That's really how I saw it. I think everyone else will will think the same way, um, unless you have unless you're blind or something, you know. You have to re-watch the replay. If you think Charlo won that one, you have to watch the replay, goddammit. What the fuck are you, the fuck are you trying to... What fight were, were you watching if you think that Jermel won that fight? Get the F out of here, man. This... Castaño clearly won that one. And we know it. We know it. We know, we know Castaño won that one. He overwhelmed Charlo. He put Charlo in a position that he's never in before because he constantly fights people who are not willing to trade with him. And he constantly fights some motherfuckers who... Who doesn't throw as many punches as Castaño, who doesn't apply as much pressure as Castaño, except maybe for Harrison. Harrison was good at, at, you know, applying pressure every once in a while. But man, man oh man, Castaño won that one clearly, clearly. Castaño won that one clearly. And I think uh, my prediction was really evident in that fight all the things that i spoke on the lead right hand of castaño the weakness or the, the difficulties of charlo in defending the right hand because of his hybrid stance he constantly puts its hands down and then back to a high guard and then back to a foolish and then to back back to a high guard okay the vulnerabilities of the high guard of castaño to be to be caught at the center that happened as well he got caught with straight right hands down the center and uppercuts too right and what else did I talk about? The volume of Castaño, uh, overwhelming Charlo. I also talked about that in my pre-fight analysis. So, yeah, just a lot of things that I spoke on. Charlo's jab, which is vulnerable to counters because he stays in there for too long as opposed to circling to the left, you know, as opposed to keeping his head more to the right side. He kept his head on the center. What happened? He got caught with those with those right hand counters. So that was it for this video, man. Post fight analysis, immediate reaction to that fight. Castagna won that one. If you don't agree with me, I don't know what's wrong with you. All right, that was it. See you guys soon. Peace.